Hello everyone, it's me, Zoe from TikTok. That's probably not the most descript uh, description of myself, but uh, I make Harry Potter POVs on TikTok, which many may find cringe, but I find quite entertaining to make. So I'm gonna be showing you how I make those things today. To be specific about it, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this specific part of one of my POVs. What about you? So as you can see, there is a bit of a mistake in the chair, but we'll ignore that and fix it in this tutorial. So it won't end up looking like that, but that is what I posted to TikTok. So this is a bit complex, like more complex than maybe your regular sort of POV, just putting yourself in a clip. Cause this is a moving clip. And basically, as you can see, it's already moving. So unless you want to like take a gander with your positioning and like try and make it look real, it most likely more often than not will look a bit janky like this clip that I did. Now I made that before I knew what I, um, not before I knew what I was doing, cause I was definitely been doing this for a while when, when I did that, but before I knew the trick of moving cameras. It's actually quite simple. Now that I know how to do it, I just never really bothered to learn because I thought it was too hard before. And I'm so glad I've learned now because it is so little effort for something that looks so clean. I'm going to be using today, as you can probably already tell, is a the Deathly Hallows uh, Part 1 Death Eater meeting clip. So to start, you want to make a new composition and make that composition the same height of the movie clip, 800 by 920, 1920. So to make it to the TikTok format, you're going to use that same height. You're going to want to have a 9 to 16 ratio. So for 800, that's 450. You can lock it if you want, but you're gonna call it like, I don't know, final edit. In this final edit thing, you're gonna wanna put your clip in there into your timeline and move it around until you're happy with the selection of the clips. All right, and now you have, you're left with the selection and then you're gonna wanna click, right click, pre-compose move all attributes into a new composition. And this will create a new composition for you. Um, I've already done it here. Now you're gonna wanna go into that composition and for this composition, I've specifically made it, this pre-comp, I mean, um, I've specifically made it the same dimensions as the movie just to make it a lot easier. Now, you're gonna wanna choose a chair. I chose this random guy's chair. I don't think he has a name. I know we've got uh, <laughs> Yaxley, don't know him, and then Rodolphus at the end. First steps first is putting in a 3D camera tracking layer. I go to when it comes in, which is right here, comes in and we're gonna place this 3D camera track effect on it. Now it takes a little while for it to analyze the background and whatever track. So just sit tight for a second. Now we're left with all these little crosses. <laughs> Now you're gonna wanna click one of them. Maybe this one, this one seems pretty constant. Now I'm gonna create create solid and camera. I'm gonna crop that with Control Shift D. So now we've got this little solid creeping in, right? It moves with the camera, you know, it's perfect. So we're gonna click on the track solid one, right click on it, pre-compose. This time, instead of moving all attributes, we're gonna leave all attributes click OK. Now this is like turned into a pre-comp. Click on it and it opens up the pre-comp. I've decided I ramble too much. This is me editing. <laughs> um, just go into the pre-composition settings and change the dimensions to 450 by 800, like the original finished edit. Ta-da! <laughs> now we can actually click on this icon right here to get rid of it. Now we're going to move our clip that we filmed on a green screen onto this. I'm gonna scale it out actually and as you can see my room is looking better than ever. Uh, we're gonna like maybe crop it to where the green screen is. So just from here. <laughs> Go from here to get rid of the green screen. We're gonna use key light which is a After Effects preset. Could you believe? Now you're gonna go to screen color. Click this eyedropper tool and eyedrop on the green. Now we're gonna go to screen matte. Now we're gonna go to the screen mat drop down menu. Clip black, bring it up until you see 
none of the white where the green's supposed to be. As you can see, you're a bit speckly now. <laughs> so you're gonna bring the clip white down. Now you're gonna go to this drop down menu again and immediate result. As you can see, it's good, but you can still see like oh, the green outline around you, so it's not the best. Advanced field suppressor is turned off by default and you're just gonna turn it on, which will then fix all the green around you and it'll just fill it in. If we go into here, it's gonna look a bit funny because it's gonna be, <laughs> see, me floating. So to fix this, I'm going to scale it to like about like the same scale as everyone else in the room. His face seems to be a bit bigger, so maybe like, um, yeah. Okay. Scrubbing through, it looks pretty good. Knocking myself a little bit over. So what I do for color correcting is the levels tool. There's so many different ways you can do this. Um, I know that Lumetri color is actually a really good way to do it, but it's just so many different controls that I find quite a bit unnecessary. This is a bit of a guessing game, the highlights and shadows, but I'm gonna go with about there. And then you're gonna click on this little Venn diagram of color, click on red. And this is gonna show you all the reds and everything in the composition. You're gonna just basically tamper with it until you're happy, until like it's matched. Then you're gonna basically just tamper with the red. Then you're gonna do the same for the blue and the green and you basically just go back and forth until it's basically about right. So now you're left with this. You can see it. See, this guy has a big shoulder here. So to see this, I'm just gonna put this brightness and contrast um, thing on it. Now, click on your 3D camera tracker layer again. Click on like a thing on the chair. I'm gonna choose this little one, okay? Now I'll just repeat the same steps from earlier that we used on the first camera tracker point. Create a new solid and a pre-comp, and then go to this layer, click duplicate, as in c control D, not control shift D, control D. Okay, uh, get rid of the camera tracker layer on this one. So we're gonna go to like a frame where it's like the most available, which I say is about here. We're gonna go to um, layer time, freeze frame, click on this pen tool is going to create our beautiful mask of this chair. Just take that off. Now we're going to copy this, control C, and go into this pre-composition and command V. Scourge, scourge, scourge. <laughs> uh, I'm going to adjust the mask actually quickly. Perfect. Okay. <gasps> we're going to go back. Um, this will work. I promise. I, I hope. Now it looks okay, great, huzzah. Uh, I just created a new solid layer and yeah, it makes it solid, but if you just change the blending room, blending mode to screen, then it just disappears and it's there. Now we're gonna repeat the same exact steps we just used for the backing of the chair for the top part of the chair to mask out the top of that guy's head that floats across the top. Basically just repeating masking out the top of the chair and the 3D camera tracker. Now, so we basically almost finished now with this one moving shot. With another's one. Hmm? With another's one. Now you can either go past or, so I might have it actually go from here. Perfect! With Look another's at that guy. one. You've done it. With another's one. Come. Surely one of you would like the honor. Hmm? So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye bye!